Next, I want to talk about using food as a coping strategy. Quite often, we know what we should and shouldn't eat, but it's not always as easy as this, as occasionally things come along in our life and trigger us and cause us to eat things that are not helpful, or they cause us to overeat, or the opposite, they cause us to undereat. <laughs> when we get triggered, we can reach for foods to comfort us, or we can experience the opposite, which is stop eating. The treadmill of life can often make us unaware of what is going on around us. We can become distracted and less mindful. Often, we're not paying attention to what we are eating or when we are eating. Or we may realise we're using food as a comfort, but we're unable to understand what is causing it. It's important that when we undertake periods of comfort eating or appetite loss, that we try to understand what issue has triggered this for us. An emotional food diary is a tool that you can use to track some key situations which may affect your eating pattern. This can be found within our website or if you do need further support and you're not quite sure why you keep on emotionally eating, please contact Together We for further support. Let's talk about some of the situations that may trigger us. Social situations, Christmas, birthdays, family dinners, all usually trigger us to consume more food than what is needed. Alongside this, we may have what we call food pushers in our family and social circle that push food on us. On the opposite scale, we may also feel self-conscious eating around others and this may cause us to undereat also. Lifestyle. We may work long hours or be fitting food in on the go. We also may have a limited budget to eat correctly or at all. All of these can cause us to undereat or overeat or eat incorrect foods. Sleep deprivation. We may struggle with insomnia. The hormone cortisol, which is released when our body is under stress, such as sleep deprivation, can stimulate our hunger hormone, ghrelin, and this can cause us to overeat. Substance abuse. Using alcohol can cause our inhibitions to lower. This may make us overeat or reach for foods which we normally would not enjoy. On the other hand, some drugs may make us not want to eat or again cause our inhibitions to lower and overeat. Comfort, boredom or food enjoyment. Often the foods that we enjoy the most are carbohydrate based. Sometimes we just find a food that we really enjoy or we will reach for specific foods when we are feeling down or boredom. Foods which we can enjoy in boost a messenger chemical called serotonin and carbohydrate rich foods help us absorb more of specific protein, which in turn boosts how much serotonin we get. There isn't enough research to show that eating lots of carbohydrates can support mood improvement, but there is research that shows that not eating enough food can lead to low moods. Being more mindful of what has caused us to overeat can help us make changes to it. Finally, certain medications which we may take for our mental health can also stimulate our hunger. Be prepared, have some snack and easy meal options ready. We can also do exercise, which can be used to not only improve our mood, but it also helps release endorphins within to our body, which are making us more excitable and more happy. It also increases our serotonin levels, which again is called our happiness hormone. And it can help us control our weight. The take home message that we get from research is eating regularly and eating well can improve our mental and physical health. Alongside this, eating well becomes a routine and routine can help anchor us during times that we feel uncertain.